Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video, and yesterday we tested out Shizu. She's decent on a few teams, um, not too good on other places. This Hinata, though, should be good on a number of different teams just by virtue of being an all-type support unit. So, uh, she is magic, she is water, she's on Wielder of Magic, World of Fantasy, she's his will, and Warrior's Mind. She also uses a sword, so if you have the old Water Hinata geared up, you can just swap it onto this one. Also, uh, attack growth. She is a single target. No, she's sorry, she's an AoE. My bad. She's an AoE. But she does do an extra 15% damage over her other EX counterparts. Like, Rimuru only does 300. Uh, this Lumi does 300, so 315%, and then, you know, once you get her up to 120, it's 335, so that's good. No additional effect, it's just pure damage. Her first skill gives all allies every single type of, like, uh, how would I, attribute buff, yeah. So, if you're a light unit and you use the skill, you will get a light buff. You'll also get a dark buff and a space buff, which don't matter to you, but you get a light buff. Hinata herself gets a water buff. Uh, if you bring uh, Earth Guy, he gets an Earth buff alongside the other six elements, which doesn't matter again, but by giving every single typing a buff, it means that she can be used on any team, essentially, as far as this support skill is concerned. And then on top of that, she also increases her own weakness strike, which only matters if she has type advantage or she's on a force that gets that extra damage buff against whatever enemy. But uh, this skill right here is already pretty good. Her second skill is the future orb change um, skill, just like the Goddess of Destiny Soka and Protector Trainee. So every orb that comes in after you use the skill is guaranteed to be orange. So you can set up some interesting combos with that. And she gives uh, Orange Gages a generic 20% increase for two turns. Which, I, I really wish this was higher. Like, I wish it was, was like a 40% or something. Because even if we have the whole entire meta and they're buffing Oranges all to hell, and we have a charm on, you still can't fully um, cycle a Protector on six Oranges. Even at like, what, 120% buff or something like that? Like, it's crazy. So I wish this was a little higher, but it is what it is. So this does limit her a little bit to orange teams, um, if you want to use this skill effectively. But I think just by having this attack buff for everybody, she replaces a bunch of units as a support slot. So I, I think this is inconsequential at that point, because there's a lot of you know typing support units that have a worthless second skill. Uh, one you never use, and this one would just be one you never use. Or, if the stage doesn't actually nerf oranges, if you have a lot of oranges, or you're going to use the entire hand, you could use this skill, and you could get away with it. And then you could just have an entire hand just to get alts, right? And then you would go back to whatever the team was really focused on, greens or blues or whatever. Um, Valor trait seals attack skills, could be useful. Her actual trait, she gives herself alt gauge for the first three turns, so if uh, in the beatdown battle that we're going to take her into, she will get her alt on turn two, regardless after sending six oranges, because she just gives herself an extra 14%, which is nice. Even the 7%, I think she'll get it. But let's, uh, let's jump in, because I don't have her maxed out. All right, we're going to go into Inferno 1 of their beatdown battle. This is the same, time at same team I used for Shizu. We just swapped Shizu for Hinata. It should just be fine. Uh, Milam is here to give the oranges and the pierce. Uh, this will work efficiently with Hinata's future orange hand, so we can make a lot of things happen here. Ranga is here for the turn one orb change. Shuna, Rain, and Shinsha are here for their respective buffs and damage. So and even without Shizu, I think this team will actually maybe run a bit better. Uh, just because we have Water Shuna here, who is Water Magic, and also giving us the extra um, alt damage. So, we'll find out. Again, I just want to point out that I like this character model. I like the 2D art. I like this character model, especially this bodysuit on Hinata. And I love her goddamn lightsaber. <laughs> I know it's like a physical sword and it's got energy around it, but damn, it looks so damn good. These effects, 
the pulsation of the actual blade itself. Mm. Uh, they did a really, really good job with her and Shizu. So, turn one, she, uh, Hinata is also on Wielder of Magics, which means that we can use Ranga's Orb Change willy-nilly right here. And then we'll bring in Shinsha for Shuna, and then we'll run with this. So, Hinata being a water and on the, um, the meta, she'll do good damage, but her alt is an AoE, so inherently it will do a bit less than Shinsha. Not by much, because we're going to be doing, what, 600 and... Uh, 30% or something like that. So there we go. She was active turn one. She's here for turn two. Her trait kicks in, and now we immediately have her alt. And I have five goddamn Shinsha orbs. Holy crap. Okay. So let's have some funsies here. Let us do um, the orange buff from Shinsha. Let's do the orange buff from Ranga. And then. Actually, we should have done that out of order. We did that out of order. No, actually, we're fine still. We're fine, because it'll guarantee it. So now, we'll use Millum. And then we have enough points to use the future orange orb here. So this is going to give us a 20% all gauge increase. And then even if we swap Hinata out, this orb coming in will now be orange. So I kind of thought we fucked up. We didn't actually fuck up. So that's fine. Let's get you out of here. There we go. And now the oranges have 100% damage, 60% protection gauge from Shinsha, 50% skill point from Raga, 40% protection gauge from the charm, and the extra 20% from Hinata's skill. And now the next hand is guaranteed to be oranges. So let's go ahead and send all this. This is just disgusting overkill. Um, but you see, we were not able to cycle fully another protector. But because the next hand is guaranteed to be oranges, it doesn't really matter. Except for this orb right here, because it's going to be... If I swap her out again, it's going to be something. So, um, we can get around that, though. So... Let's go ahead and magic buff now. We'll give that to Shinsha. And then we'll do this. Uh, uh, well, I wanted to do that. Let's just do the future orb again. And then let's go ahead and just use these oranges. Yeah, and then we'll just have this random green sitting. But we'll be ready to kill, I think. Well, no, because we're kind of short on points. Yeah. See, I really wish one of them had an alt swap ability. But I guess the idea is you just be sending them as is. So we're on turn four. We have 100 points to use, which technically... Uh... Technically, we could use both the alt buff and the Hinata buff right here, but we'd be missing out on the extra damage buff from Shinsha herself, that 25 on the EX. So I kind of want to wait another turn and get that. So we're just going to send these and get a little bit extra points. So there we go. There's the 25 points that we need. So turn five. Now we're ready to do a full nuke with Shinsha and Hinata. Hinata's not going to do as much damage, because one, she doesn't have an EX alt, um, and two, she's an AoE, but I think this will still be a very, very good turn right here. Also, Hinata does not have the magic buff, but let's use the alt buff that'll lower the water resistance, which will again just help both of those units in the back, and then we'll bring Shinsha in for rain, and then we'll bring Hinata in, f not for Ranga, we'll bring you in for Shuna. There we go. And then we can use the EX alt damage right here, plus a 57% attack buff because we've been using so many orange orbs for the first four turns. And now we get the pierce back, and now we have enough points to use the extra 50% all attribute. So this kicks in, and now they have every single typing now. So water, wind, space, earth, fire, dark, and light. If you think of this as like the Hero 2.0 where she lowered the enemy's all typing resistance so it doesn't matter who hit them, they did more damage, the same kind of a strategy applies here where no matter who you are, this buff will help you because everybody is an element. There are no type neutral people that we can personally use. So this will help anybody on any single team, any DPS unit that you want. 
and it's a free and easy, and it only costs 40 skill points. That cannot be understated. It's a 40 point, uh, 40 point skill for a 50% buff for everybody. So that right there, I think, is worth the price of admission. So let's go ahead and use Hinata's alt first, just so we can see it. Let me turn the animations on. Oh, okay, they're already on. Cool, and then we'll send Shinsha, and it's not going to live Shinsha. She's probably going to do a million or something. <clears throat> All right. Again, I, I also do like the alts. They are, you know, it shows the bond between the two, and they are different enough to showcase, you know, they are they are unique. The Rush Wave Burst. And that's the first time I've ever looked at that name. Uh, 153. Cool. That's not why we're here. Shinsha, I'm going to skip this one. 303, because we crit. Because <laughs> we crit. Damn it. I wanted to see maximum damage. Hmm. Does he, is it a 50% cut on crit damage? Because uh, if it is, then she would have done like 600k, right? Uh, that was Inferno 1. What does the golem get for crit resistance? Uh, 50%. I'll come back with a nuke, hold on. Alright, let's see if we can actually get the full power doll and not uh, get crit and lose out on half the damage. Uh, one million right there. There we go, she hit a million. That is some pretty good damage. So, Hinata definitely, you know, definitely showed her worth here, even if it wasn't this specific clip. It was, you know, the 50% uh, water buff that Shinsha got, plus the future hand of orbs. It's a very powerful ability. It's, for orange teams, I know are not the most common things in the world, but when they are, this is gonna save a lot of RNG for a, a few teams. So let's now take her onto one of those other orange teams and see how well she does. All right, we're gonna put her on the fire team. So because again, she's giving an all type buff, these units will benefit, mainly Violet, from having a 50% fire buff, which normally I would bring Christmas Shizu, because she's also a fire 50%, but she also, because she's skill fused, gives that 30% fire resistance down, which just helps our damage. But if you don't have Christmas Shizu, because uh, she just got added to the general pool to yesterday, um, and you have Hinata, you can, you can replace her, right? There's no other unit that gives a 50% fire buff, so... Violet will definitely, you know, appreciate that kind of backup alongside having points from Toa to use Hinata's skills to give the future hands of oranges. So again, this team, because it's orange focused, this should run pretty effectively, even with only like one dedicated DPS. So uh, let's try it out. All right, because Clayman needs to get burned, we brought the Benimaru. We'll take Hinata out for now. That way we have all fire units up front. We'll use the orb change. To this day, I still don't understand why it's two orange, two green when it's an orange-focused team. But hey, that's a... Uh, <laughs> I'm not a game dev, so we're just going to run with it. We'll send these greens. That'll get us a Toa next turn. And a lot of points. So uh, theoretically, now we would have a good hand. That is a that's what I would consider a good hand. So, um, we can give most of the orbs away. Violet is not an EX character, so she doesn't need six orange orbs, right? She needs what three, four maybe. So we can take Benny Maru out, and because he has two orbs, yeah. So we'll do this. We'll do the Violet buffs. And uh, da, 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 da. how many points we got? Forty nine. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do this. I have a fire attack, or I have a crit damage charm on Toa because not a lot of people are going to have a maxed out orange protection gauge charm. So I, I do want to showcase how much you get on, specifically on this team where there's not a lot of protection gauge buff for oranges. So just want to show it in use. So let's use the giveaway to Violet now to get her a guaranteed alt, and then we'll swap Hero out for Hinata so we can use her future orb. And that'll be, next turn will be a full hand of oranges, plus a Violet alt, which is an EX alt. So yeah, the full hand of oranges gave us like half a gauge. That's not great. 
That's not great. So having another hand of oranges coming in is going to be very, very important. Ooh, perfect. So now we can swap Violet out. We'll use the attack buff, or the fire attack buff now. That way we hold on to it. And then we can send Violet away for uh, Benny Maru. Yeah, we'll get his ult. And that'll bring in that other orange, so we don't have to do anything else. So now that we're going to send six more oranges, we're guaranteed to have another Toa next turn. Which means that we will have enough um, points to full nuke. So, let's go ahead and buff the orange damage since it's another full hand. Cool. And we're going to have plenty of points because Toa inherently gives oranges extra skill points. We don't need to use somebody else for that. Oh, I uh, should have sent Guy first because he had the fire buff. Oh, well. Or I should have sent Guy last because he had the fire buff. Oh, that's actually good. That's a lot of Hinata orbs that we don't need. So, let's go ahead and bring Hero in for Hinata. We'll use his stack of burn and also lower the physical resistance. Okay, and then we'll bring Violet in for Hero. Perfect. And then we'll use the alt buff right here, plus the crit resistance down, which will pair well now that we're going to give Violet extra crit damage from Toa's charm. And already, like, we only, we used Hanada twice, and it's about to win us the fight in four turns on this stage. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. Uh, and we have enough points to burn again and uh, do the instant damage. That's just extra stuff. So that's 60% burn now. Uh, we'll send Benny Maru because he lowers defense, and then we'll send everything else. And Clayman should be dead here. 43k. Guy, 26k. Violet, 191. 10k, 40k. So he's, she's going to do 81-ish here. Oh, never mind. Wait, what? Why didn't she do double that on a 200% orb? Okay, that was weird. Um, well, whatever we killed, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter. We killed in four turns on the stage, which is pretty good. Is pretty good. So Hinata definitely showed her worth here. Let's take her onto a not orange team and see if we can at least make use of uh, her first skill. Alright, we're going to go into the Wind Tempered Edge stage, going to use a kind of a hodgepodge team. Uh, Trainee, who's going to guarantee us blue orbs because the stage is meant to be used for the blue team. Also, 40 skill points that she gives means that we can use multiple big time buffs, which we're going to have a few big time buffs here. Hinata, again, she's a lower cost than the others, which is great. The hero is here with her crit and crit resistance down. Combine it with Wind Millum's skill fusion of alt damage and crit damage for wind allies, plus the you know the wind buff that we're gonna give Soka and Soka's own personal attack buff, which won't be too powerful. Um, it'll be I think what 30% right here because it'll have Hinata buffing it and then um, Soka herself buffing it. So it's not going to be the most powerful thing, but it will still be a 30% attack buff, which is nothing to scoff at. So, But this stage does not have set starting hands, so we'll be right back. Okay, so I think this is the best start we're going to get. Let's use Trainee's Orb Change to get us five blues and get us off to the races. We'll bring Soka in for the hero, and hopefully next turn gives us a decent hand. Quote, unquote. Okay, counters. Sure, whatever. <clears throat> um, in hindsight, uh, in hindsight, I didn't plan on bringing all three of the future orbs uh, users here, but it just kind of worked out that we have Hinata, we have Soka, and we have Trainee. <laughs> so, <laughs> I I swear I didn't plan it, but then as I was loading in, I was like, oh, that's funny and ironic at the same time. Let's bring you in. Uh, let's rewind here. And then let's use Trainee. And then I think what we'll do is we'll send these greens. And then we'll have enough points to use the orb change with Trainee next uh, on the rewind. Okay, more counters. 
but we'll also have a f you know the rest of the orbs coming in will be blue so that'll help us get a lot of protection gauge and a lot of points and three soka orbs i will take so let's use that let's also i think start rushing soka's alt she'll get her alt here which maybe wasn't the best idea oh well it is what it is uh, we can use Trainee to just get more oranges or more blues coming in. Is that the third counterattack on Trainee? Are you kidding me? All right, game. All right. Okay, one, two, three, and then one. Okay, that's fine. So let's continue to rush the alt. We'll need to do it a few more times. We only have one Soka orb, so you know what? I think we're just gonna not have her here right now, and I'll bring her back in when there's a lot of orbs for her. So I'll bring Hinata in, and that's a full hand right there. Uh, the, the next hand is already guaranteed to be blue. We could overwrite that with um, Hinata to get extra alt orbs. I think we have one more turn until those are nerfed. Uh, so you know what, let's try it. So this will be a, in a, uh, an example of what happens when you use two of the future orb changers. Like, we have the blue orbs already coming next, but we're going to overwrite that now with oranges. And the next hand will now, instead of being trainee, blues will be Hinata oranges. And that's how that works out. So, cool, there's a lot of blue gauge. And then hopefully next turn the oranges aren't nerfed. I may have misplayed that again. I think they get nerfed on turn five. Yeah, they get nerfed on turn five. No, they get nerfed on turn four. You, or turn three, technically. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Uh, does that get us the alt anyways? If I send all these? It gets us very close, and we can use this again, I guess. So we'll do that. Uh, oh. Yeah, so... We'll do the future hand of blues again next turn. Give us some points. And, uh, yeah, I think we big chill here. Okay, so there's the EX alt for Soka. That's what we really care about. 17k damage, except that one. 17 or 1700? I may have misread that. Okay, so let's get the type damage buff on Hinata now. Or use it now. And so that'll give both Trainee and Soka the extra damage. And, well, and technically Hinata as well, but Soka is who we're nuking with. So we'll get that. We'll take um, you out for Hinata, since you're kind of important. And we'll take you out for um, Soka, which we'll also use Soka's attack buff now. So, yeah, 30% looking pretty good. And then, yeah, we'll take you out. And hopefully, Trainee doesn't die. <laughs> hopefully, Trainee just doesn't straight up die here. Alright, so we have 140 points to play with next turn, which is enough to use both the Millen buff and the Hero buff, because we've got everything else already attached. Uh, please don't kill Diablo. Okay, good. Okay, so this next turn, if you know everything plays out right, should look very, very nice. Fine, that's fine. Alright, everyone's gonna live. Cool. And Geld, cool, don't care. Alright, so we can swap Trainee out for Soka. And then we can use the crit and crit resistance down. And then we'll use Trainee to lower their defense and give us 40 points, which allows us to use the alt buff and crit damage up. And now we're going to be looking pretty, pretty good here. So Soka has 70% alt buff right there. She has a 50% wind attack. She's got a 30% attack buff right here, 30% crit damage, and a guaranteed crit. And the enemies have a 30% crit resistance down and a 40% defense down. So this should be very, very good damage. So let's go ahead and send it, and then we'll follow up, and I, they're, I think they're both dead. <laughs> yeah, 268 on the AoE, uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, you can use her on teams that she's not meant to be used on, 
And we definitely did, I mean, take advantage of the future orange skill here. Maybe it wasn't the best use case for it, but, you know, we, we used it. And it did help us get an EX all, technically, right? Uh, let's try one more fight. Alright, the final team we're going to show her off on is the Water 2.0 team. We're going to go a different route, because normally you would bring the old Water Hinata and Water Shion, and you would seal the crit resistance and then give us the crit. Well, we're going to not use any crit here, and not pierce either. We're just going to go with straight damage. So we've got weakness buff, alt damage, we've got the water buff from herself, and then we'll have a 60% attack buff coming from the other EX Hinata, which we'll go on to her because obviously they're on the same team. <laughs> they're both on Shizu's will. So this should in theory work out. It's a long fight. I'm not going to hold you here because you know how a blue stacking team works. I'll just bring you back for the nuke uh, just because I want to see how much the EX alt does. Sh Shizu will help us with you know getting around having her alt all the time by just swapping the orb out. So this should work. Plus this not is an orb changer. So we have triple orb changer on this team. So in theory, this should work fine. All right, we are back for the final turn. Thankfully, we have one orb for Rimuru. That's all that we need. We have the EX alt ready to go. So you can come out of here. We'll go ahead and use the water buff, the attack buff, the weakness damage buff. And we have plenty of points left over to use that alt buff that Sh uh, Shuna's got holding in the back. Um, I, I don't think we're going to need it, though, to be perfectly honest. Because I think we're just going to completely and utterly annihilate this other poor Shuna. But, I mean, this is a lot of buffs that we've got going on, this new Hinata. And even for an AoE, she's still going to do 630% plus the 70% on the actual ult, plus the water resistance down plus the water attack 50% right here, plus this, the 60% attack buff, plus the weakness strike for 60%, plus 112% water attack. <laughs> so, uh, regardless, it's gonna look real nice. I think we'll end it on her actual alt. So, overall, I think out of the two units, I think Hinata will have a lot more staying power than the Shizu, at least for now. Um, just because you can put her on any team. And even if you don't need the orange skill. Like, we didn't use that at all here. But the fact that she's giving an all-round 50% buff to every single type is not something that you can underestimate. Especially when it's at a lower cost than all the other ones. She does 464k. Yeah, plenty of damage right there, even on the AoE. So, I, I like this Hinata uh, more than the Shizu. And I think she'll have a lot more staying power as a generic support unit in the future, but maybe Shizu makes a comeback later on, a couple months down the line, when we get, you know, another magic meta that may be burst-focused. But until then, I think Hinata is definitely the better of the two and a better pickup. Um, does that mean you should still summon for her if you don't have anybody? I don't know. Because if you're going to use her as a, as a support unit, you're better off kind of waiting for her banner um, to be run alongside all the other anniversary banners that will be coming, and then you can make the informed decision on do you want this support unit, Hanada, or do you want whatever's coming in a couple weeks for part two of the anniversary. Um, I think it's better to wait for that. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. That's it for me. Take it easy, and I'll see you all later.